Welcome. My name is Keith Parsons, and I'm here to talk to you about how to make your Wi-Fi go faster. How to make your Wi-Fi go faster. Perhaps we should compare how we made Ethernet go faster, and whatever worked there might help us make our Wi-Fi go faster. Welcome. Well, if we look back at the evolution of cabling, a long time ago, we used to have uh, silver satin. That's what we called it. It was flat cable. It connected up telephones. It still had four conductors that ran copper. And then we went to twisted pair. The twist kind of helped some of the things that would happen when the cables were next to each other, a little crosstalk going on. And we found that even with twisted pairs, there was still too much crosstalk, too much interference. So we started to twist the pairs individually. And then we came up with CAT3 cabling where we had some very specific requirements that if we met those requirements, we could push 100 meg. And then we want to go to gig ethernet. Well, gig ethernet had higher specs for its cable. So we go to CAT5. Now, when we went to CAT5, not only do the twists have to happen, but the twists have to go at different ratios. Then we moved to CAT5e, CAT5, sorry, CAT6. Now we're on to CAT7. And as we went along this path, the copper didn't change. The 100 meter length didn't change. So what did we change that allowed us to go from one meg ethernet to gig ethernet? Well, today we can even push it up to 10 gig ethernet if we get the faster cable. Copper didn't change, distance didn't change. What we changed was the interference. We lowered the interference. Now, for the specs for Cat5 or Cat6 cable, we have near side crosstalk, far side crosstalk, pinouts, twist ratios, how what's the bend radius. There's all sorts of very specific information, but they all fit in the category of we made the interference go down, which allowed us to make the speed go up. Hmm. I wonder what we might want to do with Wi-Fi in order to make it go faster. You got it. Reduce interference. Now, first, before we go into all the ways we can reduce interference, what's the number one thing that causes interference in Wi-Fi? Duh, it's the other Wi-Fi. In fact, Wi-Fi protocol, the 811 protocol, specifically calls out that Wi-Fi is 100 times more sensitive to other Wi-Fi than not Wi-Fi. I meet a lot of people when I ask this question, they talk about microwave ovens and Bluetooth and other weird things going on. And yes, they can cause interference, but at 100 times less signal strength. So we have a couple of ways to judge and determine whether or not we have something else going on the line. These are built into the protocols. We have energy detect, and energy detect is 20 dB or 100 times less sensitive than we have for preamble detect. And preamble detect is what we use to see if another Wi-Fi is on our system. So again, the number one cause of interference in Wi-Fi is other Wi-Fi. We control our own fate. If we want to go fast, lower interference. I've shown this picture for literally decades about how we have want, don't want, and don't care. The want is what we want coming off of an AP, and it's the target that we'd like to see. Perhaps in this case, we have NEG67. NEG67 is our target. The signal comes off the AP. Over space, it starts to degrade. Now, that's called free space loss, and you can go and study up on how that works. Basically, double the distance, quarter the power, and you get this slowly dropping curve. But the signal doesn't stop. It continues on and on and on. So what we want is whatever is above our threshold, in this case, NEG67. When it goes down, 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 it gets to a point in this picture, we're showing it as NEG85. After NEG85, we can have our client devices program to ignore it. Now, depending on what client device, how it's sensitive, whether it's an AP or a client, you can actually control this in some APs. The sensitivity of at what point am I going to ignore it? But below that level, we don't care anymore. So we have want above 67. We have don't care below 85. What's stuck in the middle? That's our don't want. Don't want means I don't want 
two APs in this range at the same time. Because if a client was sitting there, they would be having a difficulty. So let's say I have a client associated to the green AP. He comes over here and he's sitting about right here. He can hear the green AP. He's still associated. Now he wanted to be at 67, but he walked out of the range. He still hasn't roamed yet, so he can still hear the green AP. And so when this client right here at the arrow transmits, the green AP hears him, waits, and allows him to finish talking. But what does the gray AP do? The gray AP can hear him because he's above the gray neg 85. So sitting right here in the middle, the client transmits. And in the frame that it transmits, it says, hello, Mr. Green AP. And it says the MAC address, the BSS ID of the AP it wants to talk to. The gray AP hears that and goes, not for me. And he waits just like he's supposed to. That's the protocol. Only one device can ever transmit at a time. Could be a client, could be an AP but only one at a time. So if this little black arrow right here is transmitting, the gray AP can't transmit, nor can any of the clients associated to his AP because the AP is stopped and he's listening to the green client. Want is what we want. That's what we want to design for. Don't care, we don't care. And if you're using Echo, you can actually set this to show it gray so it matches what's going on in the picture. Don't want, that's how we make our Wi-Fi go faster we get rid of the don't want zones because we know only one device can ever transmit at a time. So if I can take these two APs and pull them far enough apart that they're not in the same zone, I can speed up my clients because they don't have to talk that much. Now, what about each individual client? Yep, each individual client also has a little zone around him where he can transmit and whenever he transmits, he's the only one there and no one else can use it. This works for APs, it works for clients, it works for everything. We want to go faster? Do just like we did for Ethernet. Lower interference. You're the cause of it, so you can fix it. I just threw this in here because it's a great little picture about RF. And just to show you a great little picture. If you want to learn more about wireless LANs, come to Wireless LAN Professionals, or the shortcut is WLANPros.com. Join the community. We have lots of things going on there. You can come out listen to podcasts, watch any of the WPC videos, and tons of resources there for you to use. Thanks for being part of the community.